Hey everyone, it's Jonathan here, founder of Drive Academy. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about is the trucking industry in a crisis? So I'm not sure if you've been aware, but a lot of people out there are talking about Hey, the trucking industry is dead forever. No one's making any money in trucking. And in this video, we're gonna go down into the details. We got some graphs to talk about here. They're gonna be popping up on the screen. And by the end of the video, you will be able to make a decision for yourself with what's going on with the trucking industry. Can I still make a lot of money with my CDL license? and what is actually going to be happening in the future in the trucking industry itself. So wait till the end and you won't be sorry. Hey, it's Jonathan here, founder of Driving Academy. We have an amazing video for you today. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment below for this video, and let's get started. All right, so first thing first, let's talk about what is the trucking industry itself. So the trucking industry is held up of all the different freight that goes by trucks, just like we see over here. That being said, when you think about the overall trucking industry, there's about 3 million trucks out there, which means 3 million truck drivers. And 70% of all trucks are actually owned and operated by a company that actually has 10 trucks or less. Which means you hear about all these major companies out there, which is like the Schneiders, the Warners of the world that have thousands and thousands of trucks. But a majority of the actual trucking industry is small business operations, right? That being said, when it comes to small businesses, you're gonna have people who are great business owners and people who are not great business owners. And there's gonna be a difference between just being a driver and actually being a business owner, and that's what you're gonna watch in this video here. When it comes to any industry, there's gonna be ups and downs, right? Everyone here has heard about the 2008 housing crisis. So all of a sudden in 2008, all the housing prices was going up, and then all of a sudden things boomed and they came back down. Now, back then, people thought that their houses was going to be worth nothing ever again. And now look at the pricing of houses today. Now, with enough time, things always correct itself. And the one thing you always have to bet on is that the U.S. people and the U.S. economy will always learn how to get bigger and better over time. And cycles are just normal in business itself. So now, housing prices today dwarf of what they were back in 2008, 2009, when everything was destroyed. That being said, let's talk about the trucking industry in general. There's three main factors when, that affects the trucking industry the most. One is gonna be the economic factors, right? How much money can trucking companies generate? Two is gonna be the cost factors behind it. What are the expenses looking like? And then three is gonna be the regulatory factors itself. So what is Uncle Sam and the US government and the state government actually doing to affect trucking as a business, as an operation? Are they affecting it where it's limiting the income? Are they affecting it where the actual expenses are going up? So if we're just to keep this thing as simple as possible, trucking industry, just take an actual truck, for instance. One business, and there's only two things that they really have to worry about. How much money can I generate, and what are my expenses to actually have? If they're actually bringing in more money than it's costing them expenses to operate the business, then they're what's called in the black, which means that they have profit in their business. If it's even, that means they're breaking even, which means, hey, I'm bringing in 100, and it's costing me 100 to operate, which means, I'm pretty much made no money. And if they're operating in the red, that means that they're bringing in less than what it's actually spending. So I'm bringing in 75 and it's cost me 100 to operate, um, about 25 bucks in the red. So once you understand that, now it's all about focusing on two things. How do trucking companies make money and what are their biggest expenses? So focus on the money piece first. Now there's really only one way a trucking company can make money and that is by transporting products uh, from point A to point B. Now, there's two main ways that people actually do this. They're going to do this on an open market or the spot market, or they're going to have contract work available. Now, what does a spot market mean? An average small trucking company that does not have business skills or a great business owner at its home will operate in that spot market. What winds up happening there is, hey, I don't really have any work today. Let me go on something called a load board. There's a bunch of brokers on there that's uh, telling people, hey, I have this load going from point A to point B, New Jersey to California, as an example, and it's going to cost this much money. Now, if I like that load or I want to go to the California direction, I'm going to call that broker and I'm going to try and negotiate that deal. Now, what winds up happening is, if a lot of people are willing to do the same work for less money, then all of a sudden that broker is able to charge less and get that same amount done. The other piece of it, which is how the smart guys do it, is going to be by contract work. The cool thing about contract work is you deal with a warehouse that has consistent work or consistent outflow and you lock in a set price for yourself. Now the beautiful thing about that is you don't have to worry about the market's ups and downs but people actually going into the day market which is actually those load boards that we talked about, right? 
So the companies who are actually making money are the companies who actually have contracts because it's pretty much stable income. Now your expenses can really be stable if you're a great business owner, but if your income kind of goes up and down, then it makes it a lot more difficult to practice business. And the first thing I want to let you know is if somebody is losing money in this industry currently, I can tell you 10 other people who are making money in this industry, right? And that's in any industry out there. Restaurants. There's restaurants that close down every day. There's new restaurants that open up. And there's millionaires made from restaurants every single day as well, right? Now, again, if somebody's actually making money in this industry, that means that they probably know something that the people who are not making money don't know. So let's actually talk about some facts. We have this uh, chart that you guys are actually going to see on the screen. This chart starts off in 2016. So in 2016, you're going to see uh, how the chart kind of works out. It's pretty low from what you see today. It's going to take a dip in 11, uh, 16, and then it's going to take a skyrocket approach all the way to about 2019 or so. In, in March of 2020, when everything shut down, of course it took that big, big drop where truckers were kind of like, hey, on hold, what's going on? But as you can see, it never dropped down as low as it was in 2016, which is a great thing. From there, things started opening up, emergencies started to happen, and truckers got right back to work. So you see the fluctuation of that huge jump by August of 2020, everything was moving forward. And then you see a constant increase, kind of the ups and downs, but then you'll see another high in 2022. 2023 kind of dipped out, and with the low of 2023 being in December, and that brings us to 2024. Now, if you notice that the low of 2023 was in December, that means that January and everything else started to go up. Now, you did see a dip for a few months, previously here but now the big question is what's actually going to be happening so you're going to be thinking hey everyone's saying that there's not enough money in trucking anymore and if you just look at this chart itself we are like almost two times higher than what we were in 2016. in 2016 there were still the same amount of trucks out there and people were still making money out there right so that being said is it lower than the highest it's ever been 100 percent but like i said there's cycles things go up and things go down and what people got in trouble with in this last cycle when things went up is everyone got into the industry. And a lot of people wanted to, hey, I want to become a truck driver, I want to become an owner operator. So trucks that we used to purchase for $15,000 started selling for $30,000. And all of a sudden you're getting into a business, it's costing you double to actually purchase that truck itself. What do you think is going to happen? Your expenses are going to be up, which means your truck costs are going to be up, interest rates are going to be up. And now, all of a sudden, if the rates are up and the money that you're making is higher, you can pay for that. At any time that there's a correction and things drop that back down to normal, that's when people actually get in trouble. And that's what we've been seeing happening, right? So when it comes to income itself, this chart proves that it is pretty stable. It's higher than what it was in 2016, which was terrible. And people were still making money back then. And now, what we've actually seen, a lot of people are thinking that it's actually going to be going up for the rest of this year here. So for people who do not have their CDL license yet and are kind of going on the fence, right now is probably the best time to get your CDL license because it's going to take you some time to get your CDL. But now that you are graduated, you're actually going to be part of that wave of kind of going back up with that whole freight brokerage thing moving forward, right? So very important to get started now. So that's income, right? Income is definitely going to be there. There's definitely enough money out in the marketplace to make some money. Next thing is going to be expenses. So one of the biggest expenses other than labor in the trucking industry is going to be your fuel costs. So you might be thinking, okay, Jonathan, well, if income goes up, that means my fuel is going to go up too, right? Well, that's what this chart's going to talk about right over here. So is it true that fuel costs have gone up? Yes. So if we look back on this chart starting in 2018 and then in 2022, that's when everything comes to start to rise. And that was a change of uh, administrations and things like that. Now, if you notice, since 2022, fuel costs have actually started to drop down a lot, which is great for truckers because now they're able to save a lot more money because that's one of their highest expenses there. So another good thing for the actual trucking industry itself. And then when it comes to regulation issues, every state's going to be a little bit different. For instance, California has a bunch of regulations when it comes to like emissions and how long you can idle for, which can cost a truck some money. New Jersey just created a regulation not too long ago that actually increased the insurance minimums uh, to, I think, $1.5 million uh, coverage minimums itself. 
which of course is going to increase overall insurance costs and things like that are going to be happening. So as a whole, what actually happened in the Trump administration? Let me kind of give you a quick play by play. Back before COVID, things were moving in the right direction. People thought about getting CDL license. 2020 was kind of like the peak and what wound up happening during COVID was there's a whole supply chain issue, which means that a lot of countries overseas were not producing anything. Now what wound up happening was people got free money and then they wound up buying a lot of stuff that they didn't necessarily need. Now what happened to the stores? The stores tried to order more inventory and then they heard from their manufacturers that it was going to take eight weeks or two months or two years to actually get the inventory in. So now instead of ordering the normal amount of inventory, what did they do? They said, hey, if it's going to take so long, I must order a lot more inventory than I normally do. So now what wound up happening? We went from zero production to now I'm running out of shelf space. Let me order all the inventory that I can because I don't know when I can actually get more inventory. So that caused the manufacturing companies to go crazy, which then caused the shipping companies to go crazy. And actually all these rates started to go up simply because of all the product moving back and forth. Now things stabilized back to normal. Uh, people are able to get their inventory much quicker. And now people went through a, a situation where there was a lot of inventory in all these shelves. All the stores had a lot of inventory. And then you started seeing some discounts and some sales going on just to move the inventory through. Now we're a lot more stable in the actual market itself. And because of that discount, now once the stores are full up, there's no need for trucks to keep filling them up because they don't have any place to store it. They have to sell off that inventory itself. And all we're doing now is kind of getting back to normal and making sure that things are moving smoothly. And a lot of experts are saying that this is the kind of low end of it. And from here, things are going to go start rising up. Another big factor is going to be what happens with the election and all these other external factors itself. So long story short, are the people making money with trucking? 100%. There's millionaires born every single day in trucking. Are there people losing their business in trucking? 100%. There's one skill set when it comes to learning how to drive a truck. Another skill set is learning how to run a business. So if you look at how to drive a truck itself, Driving Academy here is the best school around to actually teach you how to do that. We can put you with a company that is run by, by many leaders who can run a business to make sure that your paycheck never bounces and you keep moving forward in the right direction. And if you want to become your own boss one day, we can actually have some programs available for you too or you can get you some coaching available to make sure that you have the skills that you need in order to run a business itself. So long story short, if you know all the skills and tools on how to run a business, you can make money. If you're just gonna be a driver and you think that that's all you need to do to make money as an owner operator, probably not the best option for you. But if you're looking to make money, no matter what's happening in this market, getting a CDL license is one of the most secure jobs out there. Because even when the economy drops, and even when the country was shut down with COVID, truckers were still getting paid and they were still working. So if you're looking to get a CDL license, check out our website, cdldriveacademy.com. Again, cdldriveacademy.com. Thanks, have a great day. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like it, make sure you hit that like button. Also, subscribe to our channel. It's really going to help us out. Click on that button. And if you want to continue yourself on your road to freedom, here's more videos to watch. There's endless amounts. Hopefully, we get to see each other one day very soon. Thanks.